you ever do, let me know. I will say this. I don't know how we're coming, gentlemen. Let's be prepared starting tomorrow if need be. Starting at 8.30 instead of 9. And uh, and we, I know these folks want to get home. I want to get home. And we may start going to stand a little later after 5, too, anyway, just the way how the witnesses break. It's funny, though, how a witness always gets through just about 5 o'clock, anyway. But, uh, but we may take up another one. So don't, don't, be prepared, don't be surprised if I say let's start early and stay late. All right, I believe we had concluded the testimony of the last witness at the close of business on Saturday. Uh, Ms. Carver, and I believe... Uh, who would state call us his next witness? Mike Burks. Mike Burks. All right, someone bring Mr. Burks in. Mike Proceed when ready. All right, tell the jury who you are. Michael Burks. And what do you do? I'm a criminal investigations division sergeant of the police department. All right, how long have you been uh, in law enforcement? Uh, this is my ninth year in law enforcement. All right, and we've got, uh, well, I can still hear noise from outside. <laughs> That microphone is right in front of you, but it's probably about three feet away. So the closer you can get to it, the better. Yes, sir. All right. So how long have you been in law enforcement? Eight years. Okay. Um, back in July of 2022, were you working for the Oxford Police Department? Yes, sir. I was. All right. And what were you doing at that time, position-wise? I was a detective. All right. Um, now, did you secure a search warrant for Jay Lee's vehicle? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, did you actually perform the search warrant? Yes, sir. You and fellow officers? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what day did, did you execute that search warrant? Executed that search warrant on July the 10th. All right. And when did you actually go um, perform the search? July 11th. All right. And where was the vehicle and how did you come to be aware uh, about Jay Lee's vehicle and what did you do? The vehicle was at Bandit Towing. I was made aware by my lieutenant at the time, Lieutenant Fortner, that I was to meet Lieutenant Caradine and Sergeant Douglas with UPD at Bandit Towing. All right. Uh, after you got the search warrant, did you go to Bandit Towing? Yes, sir. Did you uh, observe Jay Lee's vehicle? Yes, sir, I did. All right. What kind of just plain view observations did you make? Plain view observations. I observed debit cards, credit cards, in the driver's seat of the vehicle, and I observed a key ring with two gold keys on the passenger side of the vehicle um, that had a little wooden block attached that said J. Okay. Um, other items in the vehicle? Yes, sir. All right. Did you take photographs of the exterior and the interior of the vehicle? Yes, sir. All right, and uh, did you check to see whether the car was locked or unlocked? Yes, sir, I did. I checked the passenger side door and the vehicle was unlocked. All right, and uh, with regard to banded towing's procedure, would they have needed to gain access to the interior of the car before they towed it to their uh, place of business? No, sir. All right, uh, so it was in the same condition as it would have been before they towed it there? Yes, sir. If I could have this mark for ideas and collect it, it's 
going to be 89 we start with this morning. All right, be marked as S89. Those are photos of... No objection. Okay. All right. Uh, you give me 20... 20 pictures. Uh, All right. Uh, uh, the, I assume you're asking to be inter introduced. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, I think it's just about to post record, right? It is. Okay. All right. Uh, S89 be in, it will, will be admitted. Yes, sir. And did they uh, accurately the condition of Jaylee's vehicle at the time you observed it on the 11th? Yes, sir. Y'all seeing this? See what back on the big screen? Is it being broadcast on the big screen there or not? Oh, there it is. All right. Can you see it? No. I can. Looking at 89 um, Is that the exterior uh, from the front angle of the vehicle? Yes, sir. Uh, anything to say <coughs> about that photo? Just the, just the type power was. Yes, sir. I know that it was a, a Ford. And if you don't mind, that, that microphone is five feet Yes, sir. Um, it's a, a black Ford with a gold racing stripe down the middle. All right. Anything on the dashboard? Um, flowers. Going around that angle is there on 89.2 of the uh, sort of a angle looking down the driver's side of the vehicle. Yes, sir. Okay. And then uh, 89.3 is just going to be an exterior photo of the rear. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, just some unique. Characteristics of that, uh, at the student ID, and a sticker on the back, and a vanity tag, it's ejected. Yes, sir. All right, then you moved in to take photos of the exterior of the vehicle. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I mean, the interior. All right, is that prior to this? Photo being taken, did anybody gain access and change anything inside the contents of the vehicle? Any items inside the vehicle? No, sir. All right, so these photos, it's in the same condition as it was when the first was over. Yes, sir. All right, and this is going to be 89.5 being projected. Uh, just describe what was. Your observations about the driver's seat, the driver's area of Jay Lee's vehicle. There is a um, bean bag, possibly in the driver's seat, um, and the debit credit cards are right there in front of the bean bag. All right. I'm pointing to that on the sort of the back of the seat, the back part of the seat. Is that what you're referring to as a pillow, bean bag? Yes, sir. All right, and then below that, on the seat part of the seat, uh, you identified some cards. Yes, sir. Uh, what were those? 
Do you have that uh, Credit cards. <coughs> then on the steering wheel. Masks. So like COVID masks? Yes, sir. In the uh, console, some other personal items? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, 89.6, is that a sort of closer image of what was in the driver's seat? Yes, sir. Were you able to determine who those cards belonged to? Yes, sir. Who were they? Jaylee. Okay. Uh, looking at 89 and 8. Um, let's let's, uh, let's uh, cover up those numbers there if they're, if they're, if they're visible. Yes, sir. Uh, and where were they photographed? What part of the The driver's seat. Okay. Your Honor, if I could have the bailiff published to the... I'll do all uh, that anyway. You see the bailiff? Let the jury see that, okay? What is it? It's, it's all eight, part of 89. Eight, eight. I didn't want those numbers displayed to the, on the screen, so. Uh. All right. Then the hands you had in your hand Is that a receipt from Dollar General on July the 7th, 2022? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and where was that located in the vehicle? Uh, the center console. Yonder, it has last four. If I can have that published as well. You, be, you can. And what items were uh, significant uh, for taking that photograph? The credit cards. Did you find out who's, who they belong to? Yes, sir, Jaylee. Uh, how did you identify them? By the names on the cards. All right, looking at 8911 on your screen. Uh, have you moved to a different area of the vehicle? The passenger side. Passenger side. Now, is that the same condition as when you first observed before you took the photographs? Yes, sir. Still in the same condition? Yes, sir. All right. And just kind of describe that area of the vehicle. Uh, what was in the seat, what was in the floorboard, things like that. In the seat is the key ring is right next to the water bottle right. on top of the jacket. Is that on top of the jacket in the seat? Yes, sir. Okay. And then in the floorboard, there's a UPS slip, a uh, Cool Whip can. Right there? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, a thermos, a, uh, a water bottle, a screwdriver, uh, beside the thermos. Right yes, sir. Yes, sir. Beside. Okay. What else is that? Uh, and the shot glass. Right, right 
there. Yes, sir. All right, the uh, shot glass uh, standing straight up or knocked over? Standing straight up. All right. What about the cool wheel? Sitting straight up. All right, 89, 12. Is that just a closer image of the passenger seat of the keys and the water bottle on the jacket? Yes, sir. All right. And 89, 13, is that just a closer image of what was on the floorboard? Yes, sir. Uh, looks like there's like barcode. The uh, UPS slip. UPS slip. Yes, sir. Like a package delivery or return. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Now looking at eighty nine fourteen. Uh, what is what area of the vehicle is that photograph taken? The back seat. Okay. On what side? The driver's side. Uh, can you identify the objects that were in the back seat on the driver's side? Yes, sir. There is a pink dog carrier attached to the headrest of the driver's seat, and it, right in front of it, that uh, black box contained a saxophone. Looking at 8916, uh, what part of the vehicle is the interior of the vehicle is being uh, photographed? The back passenger side. All right, just describe for the record and for the jury uh, what you observed in the back seat and on the back seat floorboard. A, um, another box, some toilet paper, and uh, a thermos in the floorboard. Now then, in the vehicle, you've uh, documented the different debit cards, credit cards, ID. Uh, was there any other uh, things of uh, value? Inside of the vehicle? Inside the vehicle. There's a, uh, an old driver's license, a new driver's license, and a student ID. Student ID, debit cards, credit cards. Yes, sir. What about cash? Five dollars in cash. Uh, you project eighty-nine seventeen. Uh, where was that cash observed? This cash was uh, loose dollar bills in the center console of the vehicle. Now then, 8918, why, why did you put these items together and take a picture of those items that were taken from the car? Because this was a collection of all the items that were seized from the vehicle. Right. I'm going to hand it to you. I know it's got uh, information on it, but... That information is pretty hard to read, is it not? It is. All right. I want to ask you specifically about the keys. I'm trying to keep the other information off. I think that's hard enough to read. I don't, don't think you worry about it. All right. You see those keys being projected on 8918? <coughs> yes, sir. All right. And you've described it, it had a uh, sort of a personalized uh, token. 
Yes, sir. On it, uh, it said J. It did. Now, on the keychain, was there any key on that keychain that went to the car? No, sir. Did you find a key that went to the car? No, sir. And then 8919 was the uh, saxophone in the back seat? Yes, sir. And that was, was that in the box on the driver's side? It was. Okay. And then 8920, the last image of the exhibit, uh, was that in the Chinese vehicle? <coughs> It was. What is what, what is that? A uh, birth certificate. All right, if I can have that published in the jury. Okay. Okay. Where was the birth certificate found? Uh, I do not recall. You don't remember what area? Now, in the investigation uh, that began on uh, when OPD was notified uh, by UPD about J. Lee, uh, was that your first search warrant? Yes, sir. Did you execute any other search warrants? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, How many search warrants did you seek to get on any of his uh, debit cards, credit cards, checking account information? I did discover and cash out. And we sent one off to American Express All as right. well. Um, so you, you were involved in the American Express search warrant as well? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. At what time did you uh, issue a search warrant for the Discover card? The Discover card? It, it was early on in the investigation. I uh, believe it was on the 12th. July the 12th. And how, just describe for the jury how that works. You issue a, a search warrant to uh, the credit card company? Yes, sir, I did. And you executed that on July the 12th, 2022? Yes, sir. Sent the search warrant to discover. Uh, if you could tell the jury what date range of transaction history, account information you were looking for from Discover in that search warrant? I was looking for any transaction history um, between July 8th and July 12th, or July 7th and July 12th. Okay.
kind of stating to the record if, you can, if the number of pages, if you can state how many pages there are, so start throwing stuff around the courtroom. I don't know what we got to find. This is S90. On the search warrant, did you have a return for discovery? For discovery? Yes, sir. All right. Do you have it with you? I have a copy. I'm sorry? Yes, sir. Now you'll be admitted. All right, I'm going to hand you to 90. Now, we got all heated needs, Sherry. I mean, uh, uh, yo, uh, if anybody in charge, y'all hot enough? All right. Yeah, I know, just uh, do your best. We ain't too particular. All right, so the transaction history goes back to uh, 2000, uh, 2021? Yes, sir. All right. What was the date of the last transaction on the Discover card? July 7th of 2022. All right. At the time that uh, Discover was complying with that request, uh, that was on 712 they would have given you any transactions that would have occurred between July the 7th and July the 12th, correct? Correct. Were there any other transactions in between July the 7th and July the 12th of 2022 uh, on that Discover card? No, sir. All right, did you issue a search warrant for the American Express or OPD? Yes, yes sir, OPD issued a search warrant for American Express. Do you have that search warrant? Yes sir. All right, what was the date range of the information that was requested in that search warrant? And do you have the return on those? Yes, sir. All right, what was the date of the return on the American Express? I believe it was returned in February of 23, because you have to mail American Express search warrants. All right, well, let's start over. Search warrant was obtained on what day? It was obtained on, the, <clears throat> on my notes, the 12th of July. When was it delivered to American Express? It was mailed to American Express on the... Correction, 
American Express was on the 18th of July and it was returned on the 24th of February 2023. February 24th of 2023. 2023. Did they send a um, return to you when they sent you the information? the transaction history on that account? They did return um, the certificate of authenticity. I do not believe they returned the certificate of authenticity. They didn't, they didn't send a cover letter with it? I don't believe so. All right. So the records that you have from that account, what is the date range on the information that you received? The date range, um, American Express, went to from when August the 10th beginning March of 22 March of 22 until until the last charge is August the 10th of 2022 yes sir all right, now on that information that they provided, is that the one where you had to go in and put a password in order to access the information? Yes, sir. Okay. Exhibit number 91. Yes, sir. And I understand that that's going to be in, no objection to that be admitted. Did you ask it to be admitted, Mr. Creek Moore? Yes, sir. All right, 91 to be admitted. All right, so looking at the uh, transaction history on American Express. Um, if you could just tell the jury how many transactions were on Jay Lee's American Express in the month of April. In the month of April, 27. Okay. All right. It's actually, you had March as well too, didn't you? Yes, sir. So how many transactions in March? 18. How many in April? 27. How many in May? 36. How many in June? 45. All right, now then from July the 1st to July the 8th, how many transactions were on the American Express card? Nine. All right, were there any on July the 8th, 2022? No, sir. All right, after uh, July the 8th, 2022, did you look at the transaction history through that August I believe you said August 12th, did you not? 10th. August 10th. Uh, did you examine that history? Yes, sir. Did you determine what kind of charges those were? Yes, sir. They were automatic charges. Okay. All right. Let's go through the automatic charges in July. July the 10th and the 24th, uh, Apple. Uh, so that would be like a Apple fee subscription service? Yes, sir. That automatically came out of the account? Yes, sir. All right. And then what's the next automatic that occurred? Disney Plus on August the 4th. 
All right. Subscription charge? Yes, sir. All right. Automatic? Yes, sir. Any other transactions? There's another Apple charge on August the 10th. And there is a Disney Plus credit applied on August the 8th. Okay. That microphone, get real close. So that last one was a uh, Disney credit? Yes, sir. Disney credit on August the 8th. Okay. How were you able to determine that those were actually automatic transactions? Because I could see on the statements that the, the Apple charge showed that it was an internet uh, bill okay. charge. And though, would Jay Lee need to be alive in order for those charges to occur? No, sir. After that last transaction on July the 7th, tell the jury what that transaction was. On July the 7th, it was a purchase at Loving Hair. I'm sorry? It was a purchase at Loving Hair. Okay. Um, was that an automatic charge? On July the 7th, no, sir. Uh, point of sale purchase? Point of yes, sale sir. purchase? Yes, sir. All right. Um, were there, after that transaction, were there any other point of sale transactions on that American Express? No, sir. Okay. Now, uh, there were several other cards. Uh, you weren't involved in the search warrant on them, but were you aware of his checking account? Yes, sir. I know the search warrant was submitted. All right. Who who did who conducted that? Ryan Baker. All right. So he would have those records. Yes, sir. All right. The the other, like the Cash App account. Did you look into that? Yes, sir. Do you know what Cash App is? Yes, sir. Uh, can you explain that to the jury? Uh, what kind of service that is? Yes, sir. Cash app is when you send money from one person to another. All right. Uh, did you get any transaction history on cash app? We got a return back, but there was no transaction data. Okay. Uh, so you couldn't make any observations about that and no. his activity on cash app? No, sir. Okay. Any, any other uh, financial institutions? that you got information on? No, sir. Okay. All right, courts and yeah. Yes, go ahead. If I could clarify one thing about the photographs. When I went out there and executed the search warrant with Detective Baker, I recall that I took the photographs, but I could be wrong. He could have taken those photographs, but that could be proven by our body camera footage of who actually was the one with the camera in their hand. You didn't have to explain it. It was a court where you told the press that you can't identify the depictions of being accurate. You didn't have to clarify that. They accurately represented yes, what you saw. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you went out to pursue it to the search warrant. Yes, sir. Courts and voters.
23 search warrants. Is that a fair statement, something like that? Yes, sir. <laughs> I promise you I'm not going to ask you about all of them. But I do want to go over, uh, first of all, you did uh, Discover, Capital One, American, two American Express search warrants on um, with the two different cards. You had to issue two search warrants on the same card. I did the first American Express search warrant and it was supposed to be mailed. I went out of town at the end of that week so, and I found out that that was not mailed. Detective uh, Scott Hollowell sent the American Express search warrant. Okay, you're familiar with it though, right? Yes, sir. You did the search warrant on the DNA for uh, Mr. Harrington, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, and you were involved in the uh, execution and the return uh, on the search warrant of Mr. Harrington's car as well as the entertainment center, right? I do not recall the infotainment center. Uh, got you sign, I think it's got you signed all on the return, I believe. Check to make sure. back to it, but you did um, the apartment lock audit, the two search warrants on his uh, apartment, Mr. Harrington's apartment, did you do two search warrants on it? Yes, sir. You did uh, Jay Lee's uh, <coughs> cell phone, correct? No, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to read out the entire uh, cell number, but do you have, did you do a search warrant on a cell number ending in 2533? It's identified on my list. We put together a search warrant, J.B. Cell. Yes, sir. It was AT&T. Okay. It's AT&T. Alright. You have those records with you? Yes, sir. Alright. Can I look at them, please? Yes, sir. You have the return on that search warrant? Yes, sir. Okay, can I look at them, please? You mind? You have the warrants, but you have the actual documents that came back as a result of this search warrant? Not with me. Uh, I don't have, the, have those records. Could you provide them to me if you don't mind? Copy of them. Uh, Mr. Burke, if you don't mind, I promise you I'll get your copy back, but if you give me that return by the market clerk's uh, scoreboard, make sure you get a copy of it back. Cell phone data return for Jimmy Lee. Okay. Is D ninety two?
taking that, uh, you agree with me, you got those returns uh, back on July the 25th, correct? 2022. I promise you, I'm not going to mislead you. Fair statement. Fair statement. The 21st. You, when, when was the return signed? The 25th. That's right. You signed the return, but you got them back on the 21st. You signed the return on the 25th, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. As far as the as far as Mr. Harrington's first warrant on his apartment, you remember when it was executed? July the 22nd. And I believe the return was done on the uh, 26th. And I'm going to hand you Mark for identification as that return. The next number to item, I think, the 23. items have already been introduced uh, into evidence or photographs of these items have been introduced in other civics, but this appears to be your return that you executed the search warrant. I think you've even seen a video of it on the 22nd, and you executed that on the 26th, right? I executed it on the 22nd. It was signed on the 26th. Okay. All right, thanks. And you also did, on that same day, uh, you executed a search warrant on the lock audit system there at the apartment complex, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And I'll hand you... Turn what I understand to be the items in relationship to the lock audit for Mr. Harrington's apartment. Correct? You did that, you got that return, and you executed that warrant, right? Yes, sir. We did have information returned to us.
17 pages, I believe. Thank you. D-94 appears to be what's been provided as the return, and the contents of the return, similar to the other documents you testified about. Does that appear to be the return of the lock audit return from the apartment complex in this area? Turn on the front is mine, but I turned the lock audit information over to Detective Baker, who did the examination. So I, I, I've never looked at the actual contents of the lock audit. Right, but you did the return that you attached to the, Have you ever seen those documents that attached to that? I've seen the return. What about the documents that appear to be the lock audit information for the apartment? I've never seen those documents before. I've never seen these documents before. I have a mark for identification at this time. So I'm just kind of curious how you <laughs> executed a return on a search warrant without viewing the documents that were attached to the search warrant, like you testified to earlier about the documents on the other exhibits. Immediately reduced from introduced into evidence just a few moments ago. This is the only return and contents of the return that you haven't looked at, Detective? No, sir. There were multiple that I did not review. But you signed a return. This was the inventory of it. This is the return includes the inventory. You inventory something when you get it back, right? I signed the return after. Detective Baker advised me that the information was that that information in the lock audit was provided. And yeah, this information was provided. Detective Baker reported to you that this is what he got from the lock audit from the apartment complex. You signed the return. I signed the return. Look in the desk at this time. I'm going to allow he signed the vouching card. I'm going to let uh, D94 be admitted. All right, I noticed that you did returns or executed warrants on, and it's not identified in any package that I have, but I'll give you the last four digits for the phone number. I don't, uh, it is 2914. All I have on here is a search warrant on cell number 29, last four digits 2914 OPD, Mike Burks, and I have no return. And my, my as of 11 18 2022, there was no return. Can you tell me what that search warrant was? That 2914 search warrant? I got it listed number 68 on my list. I know it's not your number, but can you tell me? Who's associated with that search warrant? I mean, with that cell number? I need to see a copy of the warrant so that I can know what I'm. Is that on your list? You, you, whether or not you did a search warrant on that cell number? It's a 662 number. I'm not going to give the middle digits. 2914. That doesn't ring a bell or any of your list of your search warrants? I would have to see it. All right. What about, uh, do you have any other? search warrants that include uh, cell numbers for any people of interest or any individuals that may be witnesses that you, during the course of your investigation, you felt like you needed to retrieve your cell phone number. Thank you. 
identify those individuals, I appreciate it. All I have is no. Right. Um, the, can you please repeat your question? I, I just, I'll go up. It was twofold. It appears that as to an individual by the name of Blaine Brown, uh, cell phone number for Mr. Brown, and I think it was executed. Uh, it was, it was no return on files, OPD, Josh Records, is no return. Do you remember? Uh, Getting cell phone numbers from Mr. Brown. Can I see the document that you're referring sure. to? No, I'm not going to have it marked. I'm just going to look at it for a second. Okay. You look at it and tell me whether or not. Look at the whole document. There's a couple of people on there. Got on my list that you sent them and execute them. If that's incorrect, please let me know. I do not recall doing a search warrant for Blaine Brown, or I do not have the warrant in front of me. Or that number, is that number associated with him? Am I missing something? I see the number, I just don't recognize okay. it. What about the other numbers on there? Y'all don't mind if I approach. And the name on there, Blaine Brown, and there's a number on there. Don't read your cell number, please. But the last four digits, 2489. It says Mr. Baker on there. And Mr. Baker did those. You did not do those, right? Right. I, I have no recollection of that. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the photographs that we just looked at. Did you last eighty nine photographs we just did? Probably. Yeah, did you? What's this there's a picture of a car right there, I don't know if that's it or not anyway. Here it is. in the car, uh, Detective Baker, did you do anything else with reference to the car? Have you towed anywhere else? Anything along those lines? Did you do anything other than photograph the car? Yes, sir. We searched the car. Excuse me? We searched the car. All right. You searched the car um, immediately after you photographed it? Yes, sir, after it was photographed. And before it was processed by anybody? By the, any crime lab tech or anything? That was before, yes, sir. You, you searched it before the crime lab tech got there? Before we sent it to the crime lab, yes, sir. All right. And you moved items around looking for stuff? Yes, sir. The car? Okay. So your representation is, is that Everything in the car uh, was exactly in this condition when you photographed it. Y'all didn't go through it before you photographed it, right? No, sir. Okay. But you represent to the jury that before it was processed, that it was, y'all went through it looking for 
um, items of value, correct? I mean, looking for whatever. You had a, you had a mace thing in there that was attached to um, this key fob right here that you've identified, I believe. You've identified this as, it's like a key fob, right, or something, but key wasn't in it, right? I'm not sure what that is. It appears to be a key fob, something belongs to connected to the key. You know whether or not y'all were able to determine. I know it has J, J on it. Maybe you'll figure out that's probably J Lee's, but those keys that are associated with that key ring that y'all, or did you do anything to determine whether or not what they went to, anything like that? No, sir. All right. And in this photograph here, I'm trying to figure this out. You got a little bit, I appreciate it. How you blow this thing up, Judge? I think there's a better photograph of some other, but this appears to be, uh, it was attached to or in close proximity to that key ring original location appears to be a, one of those mace containers that you put the mace in that people use. Is that what it appears to be, Mr. Burke? What, what are you referring to in, in the photo? Um, what, what part of the photo are you, you referring the, to? You see the, uh, you see the key, right, key file holder right there? See the, the little black piece you're yeah. saying? And the little black thing next to it. I'll try to find it later, but it I've got another picture somewhere. Does not appear to be one of those mace holding things that people use to protect themselves when someone may uh, attack them or is that what that looks like? Yes or no? I have mace and no sir, not to me. All right, but I'm trying to see if I got a better picture of it. But it's a fair statement that these water bottles, that water bottle on the seat there, is material in the same place generally. You may move it a little bit. It was sitting on the seat at the time, right? And all of these items that were here, this bottle, all these bottles on the floor here, and bottles down here, all these bottles and things materially are in the same position that it was when y'all opened the door, right? Yes, sir. Y'all said you moved some stuff before the crime lab got here. That would, that would include the front part and also the back seat and also the trunk. We're going through it and figure out. I expect you to open the trunk if somebody's in it, right? I mean, I'm, or look in the back seat. Yes, sir. We went through the entire vehicle. Ma'am, sir? We went through the entire vehicle. Okay. That is correct. You had everything on the warrant return, but not the cell phone. Was that just inadvertent? Wasn't with nothing intentional about that, was it? Just 
had to be missed off that return. The cell phone was taken with Detective Baker and Lieutenant Fortner when they left the apartment. It wasn't in front of me. I didn't see it. I didn't notate it down. So they took the cell phone with them with Mr. Herrick, right? Yes, sir. And the second search warrant that you did on Mr. Harrington's apartment was done on July the 27th, correct? Yes, sir. Did you talk with um, anyone there when the vehicle got, it was towed there from by Bandit, is that right? That's where y'all went to Bandit to do this, is that right? We did go to Bandit. So you didn't tow it anywhere else, it was at Bandit? It was at Bandit. When we arrived, when I went out to Bandit initially, to meet UPD, it was in the main tow yard, and when we came back to the search warrant, they moved it into the, um, the inside shop area using the same record. Okay. Sorry, Detective, did you talk to the tow truck driver that day or just go to Bandit? Yes, sir, I did. I believe it was Michael Kent. Right. And Mr. Kent, it has been some evidence introduced that he picked it up at Molly Bar and brought it there to his shop, right? Benton, yes, right. sir. And he was pretty adamant when he talked to y'all that it wasn't in that parking spot when you interviewed him when he passed through earlier that day. I'm not saying it wasn't in Molly Bar Trails, but he was pretty adamant that he didn't miss it that morning when you went through what? I don't recall. Thank you. I think that's all I have. All right, redirect. All right, I just may sit and be final excuse. Would you like to return? John, to I may I may meet him later. All right, I'm not uh, sure. Your your remain in subpoena, which means you can't be in the uh, courtroom during other people's testimony. Uh, don't discuss your testimony with anyone else because you may be called back. Okay. Uh, be free to leave the courtroom and just be in contact. Y'all got contact information on you, Mr. Holland? Uh, yes, sir. I think I, think I do. There's one picture on this. This is a photograph. I I can get them. All right. Okay. You can. Uh, you leave. You don't have to stay in the court courthouse, but you can't stay in the courtroom. Okay. Yes, sir. Don't discuss your testimony for anyone else.